NASA animation of FAA air traffic control data shows a normal looking day for flights across the U.S. on the morning of September 11, 2001. This is what things look like less than four hours after terrorists struck as U.S. airspace was closed. It was hard to imagine because the airspace had never closed before. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. Rosemary Basiliatis was the number two person in charge of McCarran International Airport that horrific day 20 years ago. But her boss, the aviation director, and other key leaders were out of the country for an aviation conference. So key decisions rested with Basiliatis. There was a lot of pressure again, because there were so many unknowns. The Las Vegas Sun newspaper captured the unfolding scene at McCarran Airport 20 years ago, where there were certainly questions. Would terrorists fly planes into buildings here in Las Vegas? And what about someone trying to sneak a bomb into the airport? Our industry was used as, an, as a weapon, and that was very, very hard to accept um, and not just get really totally angry over. But Vasiliata says there was no time for anger. It was time to act. Now, there were no manuals on how to deal with the closure of U.S. airspace and airports due to a terrorist attack. Unique Las Vegas, we had 90,000 to 100,000 rooms full of people that want, would need to go home. So what are they going to do? They're going to come, you know, most of them are going to come to the airport. The airport worked with the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority to get word to tourists they couldn't come here. Vasiliadis quickly gathered a team to clear out the airport, which had about 10,000 people in it at the time. Staff did a sweep to make sure everyone was gone and then did something that also had never been done. They locked the airport doors when everyone was gone. It was so eerie. Then another sweep. This one to make sure there were no explosives anywhere inside. So we had to check every garbage can. We had to check every corner. We had to do, I mean, we had to walk every corner. Now this, while the FAA had to guide about 60 planes into McCarran, some that had never landed here before. After a couple days, things reopened, and Vasiliadis says our airport was the first airport to be recertified to get planes in the air again. It was time to get people home. The whole ordeal, um, the toughest part for me, was when we had visitors from New York coming in. It just broke my heart to, to you know, see so many just in total disbelief and you know, watching TV for three days. Back then, cell service wasn't what it is today. They could not get through to their families. Landlines were down in New York, mm -hmm. and, and they didn't know. And, and that, that's, I don't know if I should tell this story, but probably I bend the rules, and I went to the airlines and said, New York flights first. We, I mean, they have to go home. They just needed to go home and see what was happening. And as we wrap this interview, we were looking at some items in the aviation director's office, including this photo of the airport. This was actually taken at sunset on Thursday. So that would be September 13th. One of our ramp controllers took that and he made a copy for me to let us know everything was gonna be okay. And it is, we came out stronger. We're okay. The airport made numerous security changes right after 9-11 and has been a model for other U.S. airports when it comes to security technology. Other major improvements include brand new and expanded security checkpoints along with several buildings to screen luggage. The TSA was also created in the wake of 9-11.